Has anyone ever told you that Jesus Christ is actually Michael the Archangel? Or has anyone told you that Jesus Christ is actually a created being? Or do we believe what the Bible says, that he is eternal and the second person of the Godhead become Christ incarnate? Today, we take a look at that on Answering the Error. Hi, I'm Don Blackwell, and this is Aaron Gallagher. We're going to do something a little bit unusual in this episode of Answering the Error. Normally, we will introduce it and talk about it and uh, break it down into segments. We're going to begin and show the entire video because it's very short. It's less than three minutes. And then we're going to come back and discuss the video. So let's begin and roll the video in its entirety. Many people regard Jesus as the most influential person in history. But is he Almighty God himself? Or was he simply a good man? Many people personally met Jesus, and some of their accounts are found in the Bible, revealing who Jesus really is. For instance, an angel spoke to Jesus' mother about her unborn son and said, This one will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. When Jesus was being baptized, God's own voice confirmed Jesus' identity. This is my son, the beloved, whom I have approved. What did his followers believe? When Jesus asked who they thought he was, Peter responded, You are the Christ, the son of the living God. What did Jesus' enemies say? Those wanting to kill him explained why. According to the law, he ought to die because he made himself God's son. What did Jesus himself say about his identity and relationship to God? He told his followers, the father is greater than I am. Even after his death and resurrection, Jesus said this about his future. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. The biblical record makes it clear that Jesus is a distinct person, separate from God Almighty. In fact, the Bible teaches that although Jesus is a powerful spirit creature in heaven, he is still subject to his God and Father. Still, God has given a special assignment to his Son to bring everlasting life and happiness to all humankind just as God originally purposed. All right, Aaron, this is an interesting video. It is produced by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus is God. Uh, in fact, to suggest such, they consider to be blasphemy. They consider him to be Michael the Archangel. Why would they produce a video such as this? And can, can you give me some background to this video? Sure. So um, this video was submitted to us. Like all the videos we review on this program, we have viewers that send us a video and say, hey, what do you think about this video? Mm -hmm. So this was sent in, and we took a look at it. And um, if you notice... It's really a, a non-confrontational, which, which mm -hmm. isn't a bad thing, but they, they basically list all the verses that say that the Bible says that Jesus is the Son of God. Right. They're really trying to put this out there that Jesus is not God, He's the Son of God. Um, and we'll take a look at that in the video and, and how their understanding, unfortunately, the Bible says if you said to be the Son of God in the way Jesus did, it meant you were claiming you were God. Right. Uh, that's why the passage they, they said in John 19.7, yeah. that they wanted to put him to death for that, right. because it was, it was blasphemy. And, so, of course, if you're going to convert someone who traditionally holds to Christianity, yeah. Yeah. it's going to begin with their view on Jesus. Yeah. And so that, that's where they start. It's interesting, you know, um, this is not a new view. Right. Um, 1,800 years ago, give or take, uh, there was a person named Dionysius of Alexandria that took this position that 
um, that Jesus was uh, created. He was not eternal. Right. And then Arius is one who picked up that. And if you studied church history, Arius is probably the guy's name that you know. And so um, the Jehovah's Witnesses have really waited about 17, 18, well, 1600 years since Arius and sort of picked up this belief. So it's not new with them. Yeah. Um, the early church regarded it as heresy. And right. so, of course, we would say it's the same thing. Right. Um, so, uh, but we're going to take a look at their points and, and just try to say, is this biblical? Yeah. And do there any have any Bible passages that contradict what they're teaching? Okay, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to play these segments and then stop and analyze them. So let's uh, go back to the beginning and play the first 23 seconds and then we'll talk about that. Okay. Many people regard Jesus as the most influential person in history. But is he Almighty God himself? Or was he simply a good man? All right, I wanted to stop it at this point because they immediately plant the idea that Jesus may not be God. They ask it as a question, and they said, you know, perhaps he's just a good man. Um, what is the problem with this thinking that he may not be Almighty God, but he may just be a good man? You know, there's something that I read, I think maybe C.S. Lewis, but. Uh, he said, liar, lunatic, or Lord. If you read through the Gospels, um, Jesus claimed to be God many times. We'll, yeah. we'll obviously look at those verses today. Yeah. Um, the Old Testament prophesied Yahweh was going to come, God's personal name, and the yeah. New Testament says it was fulfilled in Jesus. Right. And so when Jesus claims to be God, he, he had, if, he was, if he was a good man, then he was lying. Right. Um, if he was uh, a lunatic, to say you're God when you're not, you'd have to be crazy. Right. Meanwhile, the disciples have spent three years, which is about how long I've worked at GBN with you, right? Right. Almost three years. Mm -hmm. I think in three years you could tell if I was crazy or not. Right. Right. right? Yeah. So Jesus spends three years with his disciples. They don't seem to think that he's a crazy person. Right. They they all except for John seem traditionally to die as martyrs. That's right. So he's not a liar. Uh, he's not uh, a lunatic. So he has to be the Lord. And so, of course, ironically, the Lord, Yahweh, is what the Bible calls him a lot. So. And that's, that's very interesting. He can't be a good man if he's been lying about being deity. Yeah. Now, of course, they're going to go on and claim that he simply says he's the Son of God. Mm -hmm. I want you to know, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10, Jesus, of course, is being tempted by Satan. He says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and him only shalt thou serve. Mm -hmm. And yet in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 2, Jesus is accepting worship. Yeah. And so Jesus said only God is to be worshipped, mm -hmm. and yet Jesus accepts worship. Jesus with his own lips is admitting that he is God. In John chapter 20 and verse 28, when he has the encounter with Thomas, you know, um, people mm -hmm. call him Doubting Thomas, Thomas felt the holes in Jesus' hands and his side. And the Bible says, Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. And so Thomas said, you are the Lord, you are God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, that is correct. What, what, what you've said, what's very interesting here, it's when he calls him Lord, he uses the Greek word kurios. Yeah. It's the same Greek word for Jehovah in the Greek version of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. When he calls him God, he calls him kurios and theos. Mm -hmm. This is the same term used to identify God in John 4, 24 yeah. that the Jehovah's Witnesses believe refers to Jehovah. And so mm -hmm. you have Thomas identifying Jesus mm -hmm. as um, uh, kurios and theos, Jehovah, Jehovah. And notice, too, when we go through these verses, uh, we're going through it a second time, notice how many times they reference that Jesus is the Son of God. Right. If we let our own human mind determine what that means, maybe we might think, well, big Father, you know, big G and little G, Son. Right. But listen to this. This is John chapter 5 and verse 18. Let's let the Bible tell us what it means to be the Son of or the Father. Okay. John 5, 18, Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, Jesus, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, and this is what saying God's his father, making himself equal with God. God. So whenever the Bible uses the term son of God, that means equal with God. It's That's in right. this context. So every time they refer to a verse that says Jesus was the son of God, they don't realize it, but according to the Bible's definition, they're affirming his deity. That's right. Yeah. In fact, in John 10, 31, yeah. Jesus said, I and the Father am one. Yeah. Verse 33, the Jews' response was, Thou, being a man, makest thyself 
God. Mm -hmm. And so they clearly understood that Jesus was making statements in which he was claiming deity. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You see that. I mean, you see that throughout the Bible. I mean, the, the Gospel of John, we keep bringing it up. John 8, 58 and 59, mm -hmm. he says, before Abraham was, uh -huh. I am. Yes. That's ego of me. That's, That's right. back to the gar or to the uh, the burning bush in right. Exodus chapter 3. Yeah. You know, so, you know, Jesus claims deity over and over and over. That's and right. saying he's the son of God is saying I am equal with God according to John 5, 18. That's right. Okay, let's play the next segment. This will go to uh, 2 minutes, 8 seconds. Okay. Many people personally met Jesus, and some of their accounts are found in the Bible, revealing who Jesus really is. For instance, an angel spoke to Jesus' mother about her unborn son and said, this one will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. When Jesus was being baptized, God's own voice confirmed Jesus' identity. This is my Son, the Beloved, whom I have approved. What did his followers believe? When Jesus asked who they thought he was, Peter responded, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What did Jesus' enemies say? Those wanting to kill him explained why. According to the law, he ought to die because he made himself God's son. What did Jesus himself say about his identity and relationship to God? He told his followers, the Father is greater than I am. Even after his death and resurrection, Jesus said this about his future. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. All right, uh, in this particular segment, they began and said many people who actually met Jesus reveal who Jesus really is. What are they going for here? I think they're going for this sort of idea where you just present a few verses mm -hmm. and you really don't, I mean, they're leaving out John 5, 18, which to right. me is a nail in the coffin. Right. They say, you know, uh, Luke 1, 32, he will, will be, ironic, will be called the son of, uh, the son of the most high. Mm -hmm. It's, it's ironic that Jesus is never, uh, called the son of God until he takes on his human form in the That's incarnation. True. That's true. So he's not, he's not this, uh, eternal sonship like some other false doctrines teach that he's always been the son. And they're, they're building a case because they mm -hmm. said many people who actually met him, mm -hmm. so eyewitnesses mm -hmm. reveal, reveal who he really is. Mm -hmm. And then they said, we've got testimony from an angel, mm -hmm. testimony from God, testimony from the followers, testimony from the enemies mm -hmm. even, mm -hmm. and so testimony from Jesus. And so they're saying, this is who he really is. And here's all of our support. They're building what they believe to be a very strong case here. And I think they're kind of, it's ironic that they're making the case that he's the son of God, which John 5, 18 says means he's equal with God. That's right. So they're really giving you examples that an angel said he was equal with God, meaning he's deity. God said he was deity. The followers said he was deity. The enemies said he was deity. There's no idea, there, there's no concept in the New Testament. These eyewitnesses knew what he meant. That's he right. meant, I am the son of God. I am equal. I am deity in the flesh. That's right. So you can take their arguments and it sounds good, yeah. but when you put John 5, 18 and also John 10, 33 and 36 with it, mm -hmm. and you understand that son of God meant equal to God, that he is deity, yeah. it undoes all of that. Absolutely, it does. All right. Now, then it is mentioned that Jesus himself in John 14, 28, said the Father is greater than I am. Please explain that. Well, if you think about um, Jesus becoming, John 1, 14, uh, the Word of John 1, 1 became flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. And John 1, 18 says that his purpose was to declare the Father. Right. The purpose of Jesus coming in the flesh, he gave up, he emptied himself, as Philippians 2 says, of something. That's right. Uh, so if you, I want to flip over to Philippians 2, and we can just look at that passage. Sure. Because what we see is we see that before uh, in eternity past, mm -hmm. God the Father, God who becomes the Son, right. the Word who becomes Jesus, right. and the Holy Spirit are equal. 
That's right. Now, whenever Jesus decides to, well, I keep saying Jesus. He didn't get the name Jesus till he came. Right. But he is, let's call him the Word, the yeah. second person of the Godhead. Listen to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, present tense, mm -hmm. he was always equal in the form of God, mm -hmm. did not consider it robbery or something to be held on to, is what that word means, something yeah. to be grasped, to be equal with God. So he didn't think it was robbery. He didn't think it was something he was going to cling to. He let go of it, being uh, equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He gave up that heavenly home, All right. taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Okay. So what that passage is telling us is, just like John 1 does, he is eternally God. He chooses to leave heaven and take a subordinate role. Right. That's fact, the key. Listen to verse 8. Yeah. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself, one mm -hmm. version says, emptied himself mm -hmm. and became obedient to the point of death, even, or to the point of death, even the death of the cross. And so he became a man, mm -hmm. he emptied himself, mm -hmm. he humbled himself, mm -hmm. and then you can write next to that John 14, 28, the Father is greater than I am. Yeah. That's the explanation. Well, and think about this. If we look at inspiration, how it works, when you go to John chapter 16, before Jesus left, he told the apostles that the Holy Spirit was going to come, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit was not going to glorify himself, but he was going to glorify Jesus. Right. Verse 13, when the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Well, what does John 12, 49 say about where Jesus got his authority? Mm -hmm. John chapter 12 and verse 49, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. Right. So while you have this equality of you know, everything before this uh, submission, Jesus comes in the form, he submits himself below the Father for yeah. this role of coming to an earthly body okay. and dying on the cross. So is the Father greater than him? Is he maybe referring to at this point in time? Uh, it's possible he's referring to him taking a lower position of authority in what seems to be like this hierarchy right. for a limited time. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's play the next segment. Okay. The biblical record makes it clear that Jesus is a distinct person, separate from God Almighty. In fact, the Bible teaches that although Jesus is a powerful spirit creature in heaven, he is still subject to his God and Father. Still, God has given a special assignment to his Son to bring everlasting life and happiness to all humankind just as God originally purposed. Okay, two, clear, two things he points out here that we need to address. Number one, he makes it clear, he says that Jesus is a distinct person separate from God Almighty. And the second thing is that he points out that uh, Jesus said that he's subject to the Father. Now, the first part, when he says he's a distinct person, we should make it clear that yeah. there are three distinct personages or three distinct individuals who make up the Godhead, mm -hmm. God the Father, God mm -hmm. the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And there are passages in the New Testament that address that, such as Acts 17, 29, Paul on Mars Hill says, being then the offspring of God, we ought not to think of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. And he mentions the Godhead, talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The New King James uses the term divine nature instead mm -hmm. of Godhead. Mm -hmm. Colossians 2 and verse 9, speaking about Christ, says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Everything that it means to be mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. was dwelling in Jesus Christ. And of course, you've got other passages like the Great Commission, mm -hmm. Matthew 28, 19, Jesus speaks to his apostles and says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so he names all three persons in the Godhead in that passage. And uh, we could give some more, but uh, that's enough to establish the point. But um, what about, again, this idea? Uh, what, what are they going for when they say that Jesus is distinct from God the Father? Well, they're trying to say that uh, they're not saying this in the sense of, if you hear the word Trinitarian, the right. Godhead, they're not saying, oh, well, there are, there's one being of God and three persons. Mm -hmm. They're saying there is one God, Almighty the Father, and everyone else is below Him. Right. So what the, it's interesting. The statement they said is factual, but not in the way they meant it. Right. So yeah, Jesus, or the second person of the Godhead, is distinct. He's a distinct person from God the Father. Right. But where they're wrong is that he is he is God, yeah. and the Scripture refers to him as God. I mean, so many times. And they're trying to use that concept to to deny his deity. Absolutely. And if someone watches this, we're not going to be able to cover everything. If you want more information about the Godhead, 
more um, you know, things even that go to the Greek that dispute the New World translation. They have their own translation of the Bible That's right. that adds words that aren't even in the Greek. That's right. They change rules. They even in one case in the 50s in the, the uh, New World translation, they invented a Greek tense. But in the 50s, you didn't have the internet, right? right? So it took some people. Once Greek scholarship found that they, inv- they invented maybe the perfect indefinite tense, um, Greek scholarship said, well, that's not even a Greek tense that exists. And right. so they changed it. Hmm. Um, so th- they got caught red-handed with that. If you want any more information about this, whatever we don't get covered in the video, contact us through email. We can send you tons of information to study and read on. So. Yeah. We don't want you to think that we're taking this out of context, but this last segment of the video really is just them encouraging you to go to their website for more information. And so we're actually not going to uh, go through that segment. One of the things that, that we talked about doing is uh, there's something in the, the study of Scripture, the fancy words hermeneutics, all right? But mm-hmm. it's how you interpret and study Scripture. One of the most basic rules is that you never interpret a hard passage uh, over, and, and what I mean by that is you take a look at the very easy and clear passages first, right. Right. and then you say, okay, this is easy and clear. Well, how can I make these two work together? Right. So when they mention all these about Jesus saying, ascending to your God and my God, notice he doesn't say our God right. like a man would. He says, look, he's your God by grace. He's my God by nature. We right. are God, right? Right. So I want to look at some passages um, that are pretty clear about the deity of Christ. Uh-huh. The best one is John chapter 1 and verse 1. Sure. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and mm-hmm. the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God. Right. That word was is in the imperfect tense all three times in that passage, which means he always was. Right. He's eternal. He's yeah. not created. And so uh, this is a verse that in their version, they actually, the New World Translation, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. A God. Yeah. yeah, so they and add something in this passage that's not in the Greek. You know, one thing that's important to notice for someone who may not uh, be certain of this, in the beginning was the Word, that is talking about Jesus Christ. That's right. And the way we know that is if you go down to verse 14, mm-hmm. the Word is described as the one who became flesh mm-hmm. and dwelt among us. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning was the Word, that is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Prior to coming to this earth, he's called the Word. That's right. Now, you noticed in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, mm-hmm. is what my Bible says. In fact, all Bibles, mm-hmm. except for the New World Translation, mm-hmm. they have translated that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was lowercase a God. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I-, I want our viewers to pay attention to this because it sounds kind of boring here, mm-hmm. but if you call their hand on this, they will tell you that the definite article is not there. It doesn't say the God. And so when there's a definite article missing, they say it becomes indefinite. And so they say they have correctly translated it as a God. Well, either they are very biased in their point of view or they are poor Greek students because Mm -hmm. Greek grammar does not say that when the definite article is omitted, then it becomes indefinite. In fact, I went back and checked this because this came up in a Bible study. This is Greek grammar beyond the basics. Uh, This is Daniel B. Wallace, which is uh, very well respected and authoritative. Uh, Listen to the Greek rule. This is uh, Wallace's Greek grammar, page 270. He says, when an anarthrous predicate nominative, that means without an article, Mm -hmm. there's no definite article. When an anarthrous predicate nominative precedes a verbless subject, it will be either qualitative or definite, not indefinite, just as would be a pre-verbal anarthrous predicate nominative. Mm -hmm. And they go on to say it's possible that it could be indefinite, but Mm -hmm. it's extremely rare. And Wallace's grammar even points out specifically that is not the case Mm -hmm. in John chapter 1 and verse 1. So what does that mean? It means they're wrong in their translation of John chapter 1 and verse 1. Um, they're, and they're not even consistent in John 1. If you want to go true. to a deeper study, you can go through just John chapter 1 and see there are other places where there's no definite article, and they don't translate it as a God because sometimes it refers to the Father. That's true. Yeah. In fact, in the New Testament, there are 282 occurrences of, of the term theos, that mm-hmm. is God, without a definite article. 16 of those times in the New World Translation, 
they translate it mm -hmm. as a God mm -hmm. or something indefinite. That means that they are faithful to mm -hmm. their supposed rule 6% of the time. Yeah, when it yeah. only when it fits them. That's right, that's right. You know, it's interesting too, they say he's created, because they say he's Michael the archangel. Mm -hmm. They base that off 1 Thessalonians 4.16, mm -hmm. which basically talks about the second coming, mm -hmm. and it says that uh, the Lord will appear, and it says what's going to accompany that appearing is uh, the shout of an archangel right. and the sound of a trumpet. Right. Well, if you're going to make the article that, not trying to be poke fun, but mm -hmm. that the fact that a shout of an archangel will accompany it, then you could say, well, the sound of a trumpet. Is Jesus going to be a trumpet? Of course he's not going to, right? right? right. So that's the only really scriptural uh, support that they have for that. Um, so you know, we're still in John chapter 1. Uh -huh. Look at verse 3. Another thing they say is that Jesus uh, was created, right? John chapter 1 and verse 3, listen to this. Uh, let's finish verse 2. The Word was God, verse 2, and He was in the beginning with God, verse 3. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Now they, once again, they change something. Now this time they don't even appeal to the Greek, they just add a word. Right. Um, nothing other was made than Him. Right. In Colossians 1, they, I think they add that four times in that yeah. section of Colossians 1, 15 through 18. Right. So that's a case where they're, they're just adding words to, to really support their theology and their translation. So You know, you talk about the idea of going to simple passages. Mm -hmm. I think one of the simplest is perhaps Matthew 123. Mm -hmm. Before the birth of Jesus, an angel appeared to Joseph and told him, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, mm -hmm. which is translated God with mm -hmm. us. The Christ child is identified mm -hmm from heaven as God with us. That is straightforward, it's simple. There's a couple other ones just quickly. Isaiah 6, there's mm -hmm. this glory of the Lord. John 12, 41 says that Isaiah spoke when he saw his glory, Christ's mm -hmm. glory. Okay, that's it's Yahweh Saba in Isaiah 6. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 40, someone was gonna come and prepare the way for Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Mark 1, 1 through 3, and Matthew 3, 3 through 5, maybe 3, say that that was John the Baptist preparing the way for who? Yeah. For Christ. Yeah. So Christ is called, you know, they're Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. The Bible clearly, Old Testament prophecy, prophecy of Jehovah coming and Christ fulfilling that prophecy. Right. So. And of course, Isaiah 44, 6, mm -hmm. God or Jehovah is called the first and the last. Yeah. And in Revelation, Revelation. 22, 13, yeah. Jesus is the first and the last. And yeah. There can't be two firsts and there can't be two last. Mm -hmm. And so when you put them together, clearly, Jesus Christ is God. And look at this. Jesus claims to be deity. Others claim he's deity. He's referred to as Yahweh. He's the virgin birth. Uh, he's also claimed, and he's worshipped. I mean, that's five things that that's right. only apply to deity. That's so right. the idea that Jesus is not God, uh, it's, it's a, the nicest way to say it is it's false doctrine. Yeah, and uh, this is such an important subject because Jesus said in John 8, 24, except you believe that I am he, then you will die in your sins. This is a salvation issue. <laughs>